going to ramble on again for on about a different function. And let me just go through a simplifying one. If so far we've done easy problems like this, like so far we've, we've discovered 3x plus 1 equals 0. So to solve for x, we just use inverse operations, right? Linear, linear equation, inverse operations, you learned in algebra 1. Good job. Then in algebra 1 and algebra 2, we more focused on um, quadratic equations. So let's do plus um, 3x plus 2 equals 0. Now, we can't just use inverse operations, right? Because now we have a quadratic term and a linear term. So to solve this, we had to use, Trevor, we had to use what type? Factoring. factoring, right? And we used factoring because once we, once we have something factored, then we can apply the zero product property. And the zero product property, what that tells us to do is when you have two terms multiplied that give you zero, the reason why we factor it, once we have it factored, we can set those both equal to zero, right? Then we can solve. Now it's possible to solve by using inverse operations, right? Cool. So when students first look at this problem, the first most common question that I get is, so do we multiply, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can already see, if you multiply, you're just going to go, if you go ahead and multiply this out, um, you're, you're just creating, you're just expanding it, right? We already have it exactly where we want it. We already have it as a zero product property. Because it says tangent of 3x times the tangent of x minus 1 equals 0. So we're, it's where exactly we want it. We can just now write tangent of 3x equals 0 and the tangent of x minus 1 equals 0. You guys see how it's already, it's already set up, right? If it's not set up, then you're going to want to factor it, and then you could solve for it. But here, we're already cool. It's already set up like that, so it's good. We can just spread it apart. So now we just need to solve each one. So again, we don't have, uh, we don't have a constraint between 0 and 2 pi, so we need to find all the values. So let's first find the values, though, on the interval of 0 and 2 pi. So I'll add 1 here. So I have tangent of x equals 1. So when is tangent of x equal 1? Well, there's going to be two angles. So we have this angle at pi over 4, because we have square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2. Then we have this angle, negative square root of 2 over 2, comma negative square root of 2 over 2. And 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. Everybody agree with me? Yes? Yes? OK. So in this example, we have pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Now, here's a little bit different. So you could say x equals pi over 4. Now, we could say what we did before was we always said, oh, plus 2 pi n, right? But I said it's not always that case. Because look, it, if, I want to go, if I go from here, yes, we know plus 2 pi is going to be our next answer, right? But rather than saying x equals pi over 4 and x equals 5 pi over 4, if I just say x equals pi over 4, what do I need to add to get to 5 pi over 4? Pi. And then to go from 5 pi over 4 back over to pi over 4, I just need to add pi. So in this case, I can just add pi n. And I don't need to worry about writing the 5 pi over 4 because it's included in this answer, right? If you just take 5 pi over 4, add pi, add pi, add pi, add pi. It's always going to provide you those two answers. So my answer is just going to be x equals pi over 4 plus pi n. Now let's look at when is tangent equal to 0. So remember, tangent is y over x. So we have 1 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. At this point, 0 comma 1 or 0 comma negative 1. At pi halves and 3 pi halves, y over x is going to be undefined. So it's not going to be those two. But you can see we have two answers. We have at 0. And then we also have at negative 1, or I'm sorry, the angle of pi. So I can just say 3x equals pi times n. Because if I do at pi once, it's right here, pi twice, pi three times, four times, five times, six times, right? Or you could do you know, pi zero times would be right there. So if I just say tangent, when tangent, what angle when tangent equals 0 is just going to be pi times n, where n is going to be any variable. Then I solve for my x, and I just do x equals pi n 
divided by three. So therefore, those are going to be your two cases. Do you guys see how sometimes it, diff it changes if it's plus pi, 2 pi n or plus pi n or not even plus pi n? Because we don't need to, you don't need to write, you don't need to say pi plus pi because it's just multiplying by a multiple, right? It's already there, so you don't need to add it. Cool. Amazing. All right, guys. Cool. Good chat. I'm done.